Walking a path along the roots of Pikes Peak, you take a fork in the road to the Anselm Society Digital Pub. Inside is a raucous conversation on the arts, faith, and that mysterious vexing out of our control element known as timing. At a corner by the fire are three people. One of them is a frequent victim of disastrous timing. And that's me, Evangeline Denmark. And welcome to Believe to See, a podcast of the Anselm Society Arts Guild. Here at Believe to See, we explore the relationship between faith, art, and storytelling. Our goal is to help you connect the great story, the great stories, and our own stories in order to understand what it means to live with a Christian imagination. It was September of 2018, and my new novel was about to go on submission. I'd done rewrites and edits with my agent, incorporated feedback from beta readers, and even hired a sensitivity reader to make sure my attempt to honor cultures and experiences not my own hadn't gone awry. I dotted the I's and crossed the T's. The manuscript was ready. I loved this story. It was born out of one of those flashes of inspiration that feels like magic. It incorporated a myth that captured my imagination the moment I stumbled across it. I was completely in love with my hero and heroine and their journey. I'd written it during a particularly difficult season with one of my neurodivergent kiddos, and it felt like creating a neurodivergent character was one of the ways I could honor their journey. In so many ways, this novel had come together at the perfect time for me. My agent messaged me the week before we planned to send the book to editors. Right away, I knew this wasn't just part of the flurry of communication before submission. She said we needed to talk. Does anything good ever come from those words? In my gut, I knew something was really wrong. A few days later, we had a phone call. My agent explained that she'd just returned from a young adult literature conference where she'd had the chance to assess the climate in young adult publishing. The book we'd both worked on, that we were a week from shopping, that I loved more than any book I'd written to date, simply would not work in the YA fiction landscape at the time. I had written the right story at the wrong time. So we killed it. We pulled the plug. There are reasons for that decision that I can't get into, but after that conversation with my agent, I never questioned whether it was the right thing to do at that time. That doesn't mean it didn't hurt. I lost two years of work. I lost something I created and believed in and loved. I was angry and hurt and at moments very bitter. I just opened that document the other day as I was preparing for this podcast, and guess what? It still hurts. I read the first few chapters without even realizing it. It just went by. And the desire to share the story with others welled up all over again, and I was faced with a choice I'm all too familiar with. Allow bitterness to grow inside me again, or trust somehow that the story I poured effort and love into wasn't a waste of time, and that someday that story's time will come. And that's what I want to talk about with my wise and creative co-host today. Welcome, Mandy. Hello, and may I say that that book, because I got to be one of your critique partners for that book, is one of my favorite books I've ever read. Aww. I absolutely <laughs> love that book. Thank you. So, Mandy was not compensated in any way. For nope. <laughs> Welcome, Christina. Well, I have not made a deal with you yet. <laughs> <laughs> you need to send the book to Christina because she would love it too. Oh, I'm sure I would. You would. That's good. <laughs> So I know we're calling this podcast Right Story, Wrong Time, but I, or at least, you know, at time of planning, that's what we were calling this. <laughs> but I think that this struggle cuts to the heart of, like, many of our experiences as humans. Like, what do we do when our timing seems out of sync? Um, when the work that we poured ourselves into doesn't seem to go anywhere and we're left in limbo, like, wondering if our wires got crossed? First, I need to know... 
is this just me like in a broad sense do you guys know what i'm talking about when you're just like spinning your wheels or you've poured into something and nothing comes of it do you know what i mean yes yes there okay no <laughs> I think not not to the level of your journey as far as getting it all the way completed and then not being able to shop it. I remember your heartbreak. I shared it with you, and I really want this book to happen. Um, But I have had ideas that I have um, spun my wheels on for sure. And then, um, I don't know, I tend to churn with them for too long before I realized this is just, it's not going to um, come to fruition. I've never yeah. had something come all the way to fruition only to have to kill it like, yeah. your, like your journey. But do you think that it, it works in other areas of life, like not just the creative process? I mean, yes, we're talking about the creative process and that's what we are all, you know, intimately familiar with that mm-hmm. certain frustration, but just like pouring your effort into anything and you're just like out of sync with everything else that's going on. Do you ever have that feeling or is that? <laughs> that's not just you. No, I think that definitely, I mean, for me, I mean, I, I sort of beat this topic to death in this podcast, but yes, I am older than most of you. And, but no, but that's you the are, You are not that much older. <laughs> However, I know. you're I, okay. <laughs> All right. But anyway, I'm, I'm a very young looking 75. Nobody knows that. So. Damn, girl. <laughs> 75? Uh, anyway. Um, but no, I mean, as far as like, I spend a lot of time wondering, like, why didn't I do, why didn't I pursue writing sooner? And did I make a mistake not having mm. um, pushed to do mm-hmm. this sooner? But mm-hmm. um, I really have come to understand because um, I was a psychology major. I was not an English major. Well, I was, and then I switched because I was afraid that it would hurt too bad if I actually tried to be a writer and failed. So, yay. Anyway. um, (laughs) Yay being young and stupid. (laughs) Yeah. We were all there. I was about to say relatable. Yeah. (laughs) Well, that's what I mean. Except we all made stupid decisions in college because never mind. It's fine. It's fine. We're good. Right. So on the one hand, wow, why did I shoot myself in the foot like that? But then on the other hand, when I really, when I think about it, um, and I was... Talking, you know, um, whenever anyone finds out you're a writer, they either go, they either say the very obnoxious thing. Dear listeners, don't ever say this to a writer. If I had time, I would totally write a book. Don't say that to a writer. Okay. Okay. Anyway, moving on. (laughs) Um, Or a painter or anyone else. Um, So, because it's not a luxury. It's really not. It's something you make time for. Um, and so if you want to write a book, write a book. Don't, you know, stop waiting for time. It's Just blood, it. sweat, and tears, man. All the yeah, way. yeah, yeah. So, um, but then um, other people act like you're like some unicorn. They're like, whoa, you're a writer? And they like, um, and so that was the situation I was in a couple weeks ago. And um, this very kind man was asking me all these really cool questions. You know, some people are just really good at asking unique questions. Mm -hmm. Um, And so he wasn't asking me the typical questions. And um, so when I mentioned that, he said, have you always been a writer? And this, okay, husband points, my husband was standing next to me. And he said, yes, she has. And I loved that. And so, I mean, on the one hand, yes, I have. As soon as I could, I started telling stories. But anyway, wow, I'm going off track. Um, Right story, wrong time, Mandy. No. Um, (laughs) <laughs> well I was done. just trying to illustrate the point in real time. Well no. done. Thanks, well done. Thanks. Okay. Anyway, so he asked, so when I said I was like making, you know, self-deprecating, that's my superpower. Um, and so I said, I said, yeah, I was going to be a, you know, English major, but I chickened out and I was a psychology major. And he said, well, wait a minute. That's good though, because didn't you learn like how people work? 
And I mean, that doesn't that help your writing? And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I've thought of, I mean, I have thought of that before, but in sort of a like way to appease myself and make myself feel better. Right. But to have someone outside of me say that, that was really And say it with such immediacy. Yeah. Like, say it not as, like, consolation, but, like... No. But, hey, like, have you thought about this? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? No, he was totally like, I don't know. That sounds like maybe right. that was the mm-hmm. right timing. Yeah. And so... That's, that's cool. Yeah. So here I have spent all the... You know, I'll sit there and I'll do the math. <sighs> oh, my, my dog just sneezed. Sorry if you heard that. Bless you, Winston. Bless you, Winston. Um, <laughs> um, so... You know, I spend a lot of time regretting all the years, quote unquote, lost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But maybe they weren't Mm. lost. It was just, it was the wrong time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't regret that I raised my children. (laughs) And I I mean, I learned a lot. I guess that was a good thing to do. (laughs) Right. I suppose. (laughs) I guess. Um, But the books that I'm writing now, could I have written them if I had tried in my 20s? No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Good point. Yeah. I think regret is is Ugh. one of our biggest It's my least favorite wrestling. emotion because it's totally futile. It and is. it's it's crippling. I think that's what yes. gets me. Yes. It's so crippling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'm hoping that you guys will share a project that feels like it came to you at the wrong time if you have any like exact experience or, you know, I think it, it's helpful for listeners to know that mm. this, that this we is, are also weirdos that we, well, that we are all three <laughs> of us completely weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I said, I suspect that this is an experience that is universal, mm-hmm. whether or not you are an artist and that, you know, we can spend a lot of time in regret. Mm -hmm. And so what do we do with that? And I think it just helps to know that other people have run into this kind of thing. So, yeah, I mean, I can have all kinds of things, you know, um, vocationally related to, you know, we always think, well, I, I always wanted to do this as a career and I never did. And now it's too late. And, you know, you have all the, I mean, this can, like you said, wrap itself around all kinds of areas of life. And, um, that's where we get caught in that trap of, of time, right? Um, the cycle of like, it's too late. And, uh, then that, you know, you have the other side of things where people are like, it's never too late to fulfill your dreams. And <laughs> it's kind of really, really you sure about that. You sure about right. that. Cause I had a dream, you know, to be a, you know, a marathon, you know, runner. And now I'm like 90 and can't move, but, right. you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but I think, but there's this interesting, um, just this interesting sense in, um, in which time, well, I think honestly, because we have a creator who loves us and created time and created us within it, time can be redeemed in ways we still don't quite understand. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it kind of weaves in and out in ways we don't quite understand. So things that we thought you know, arrested our progress or, or killed a dream when it began mm-hmm. sometimes were for lack of a better word, like gifts of the Holy Spirit saying, you really want to, but now is not the right time. Mm-hmm. And it's because it or something like it, something better than it will unfold in a time you just can't see right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I think that's the hardest thing for, for humans to, to wrap our minds around. We're, mm-hmm. I mean, of course it is. Like we're, you know, we live in here and now. So You know, and especially since it's not like, okay, well, in the year 2000, whatever, don't worry, honey, this will happen. You know, we don't get that assurance, you know, like this, this is a maybe never thing. This is a, maybe I've lost this forever. And that is a terrifying thought. It is. Um, But yeah, I I don't think that's necessarily true theologically for other reasons. I think, you know, um, I think when we talk about living into eternity and pursuing our callings and the giftings that God gave us, I do think as Christians, that, you know, that Christians do not have to fear a true loss of right. everything. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there are ways in which these things will come back to us that, that we cannot understand. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, I think it's like you said, Evangeline, it, it goes into all spheres of life. Um, 
for me, yeah, I mean, I have plenty of, plenty of those moments and plenty of what I would say regrets or, or just even bitternesses, bitternesses, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> just about how life didn't work out the way I'd hoped. And you know, I, uh, th that's hard, you know? Um, and yet I, if I am, if I am uh, mature, <laughs> <laughs> maturing. mature about it. You're maturing. <laughs> I can see how I'm better in ways that I would never have thought I needed to be better if I hadn't been thwarted in my original desires. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, I yeah. think we forget that our um, perspective is finite mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. cling, uh, we, by we, I mean me. Um, <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully there's some commonality in the listeners. <laughs> in humanity, but, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I know that for me, I particularly cling to the um, God will give you the desires of your heart. And mm. I will qual qualify that by um, I, um, I think we typically hear that to say whatever you desire, God will give it to you. And I don't. Mm -mm. That is not actually what that means. It means God will create desires in your heart um, that he will fulfill. Mm -hmm. And so, but the problem is some of the desires in our heart are not from him. And when we feel sure, and I mean, you can mm -hmm. like put it out on paper and go and like argue with God, like, why would you not make that happen? That sounds perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's the yeah. person you thought you were supposed to marry. Yes, and I was about to use may that I just say, I am very thankful my husband did not marry the girl he thought he was supposed to marry. He was even engaged to her before me, and then it fell apart. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> um, I, I hope he's grateful too. No, he's, it's fine. It's all good. We've been married 30 years, so it's all good. But anyway, but I mean, there's the, he was crushed by that. Yeah. Crushed mm. six months before their wedding. It yeah. fell apart. Yeah. That yeah. did not feel good. Yep. You know? Right. Um, and that's not to say, mm -hmm. I don't know, this is kind of, we were just talking and I don't know what order these podcasts will be released in. So maybe it's not one they will have already listened to, but we, I use the term spiritual bypassing. Um, I don't want to say like, whatever doesn't feel good now, it'll be fine because you'll get it in another way. Maybe you won't. Mm -hmm. You know, Peter might have never gotten married. And, um, right. you know, so I'm not saying like God's going to replace whatever thing you wish you had with, mm -hmm. you know, something of equal or greater, um, you know, something comparable. Right. Um, but I just know that as humans, we can only experience time in the immediate yeah or like we were saying as regret which is terrible yeah. mm -hmm. um so we tend to cling to the things that seem so right mm -hmm. to us and it's hard to let go of um our own sureness yeah that's not a word certainty, certainty. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say surety. Surety, surety is a word. Yeah, there you go. Something. I don't think it means certain. I don't think that's either. I think it's a financial term. How about? Which is outside the purview of this podcast. <laughs> I'm going to say certainness. How about that? No. So, um, so, so we, when it seems so, I mean, have you guys ever done that? You go to God and you're like, but why would you say no to this? Oh, so many Clearly, times. Clearly, this is awesome. Yes. <laughs> There's oh. no... Why? I, no. I totally stalked an editor that I was sure was perfect for me. I and by stalked, I mean I went to her Twitter like page and her website like regularly. Right. That's that's yeah. all I did. I didn't send her threatening notes or <laughs> right. chocolate to her. Evangeline no. threatening. <laughs> that's good. That's good. And I mean, you know, there are things like that that are funny and there are things like that that are super sad. Like when you lose yes. someone or, um, or to your death project. or a breakup or, Dies. so, I mean, but that's the reality of life. But, um, what, where was I going with that? <laughs> um, so yes. So there are things that we think this has to be the right time for this and it mm -hmm. has to happen now because why wouldn't it? Because it seems perfect. Because it yeah. seems perfect. Um, and then, you know, 10, 20 years down the road, some, not all, of those things make sense. Oh, so true. Some 
not all of those oh. things we will never understand. Yep. Um, but it, it really is something that, um, for me, I just have to remember, God made me to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and that took me a while to fully understand that God made me to write and he made mm -hmm. me to create. And I'm grateful that I have that because now that I know that that's, that's just part of who I am and who he wants me to be. Um, yeah. And who he has created all of us to be as we create because he created. And out of our gratitude, um, we want to create more. And I am quoting Leslie Bustard, <laughs> roughly, in, when I say that. Um, listen to the podcast about Leslie Bustard. But anyway, um, and so when we are stymied, like you were, Evangeline, mm -hmm. um, you got to like scrape your flat self off the ground and go, but I still have to create. I've yeah. definitely got an image in my mind now. now? <laughs> yeah. God, it totally feels that way. I yes. mean, it, yeah. yeah, you I like pancakes or gum on a shoe. Yes. <laughs> scraping like, yeah. yourself off. Oh, yeah. But you know, what's interesting yeah. is like, I can look back. One of the gifts of, of living a little bit of time mm -hmm. um, is I can look back and see things that crushed me. Yeah. And go, okay, that was not the right direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can see that. And then some things still hurt. Oh, yeah. yeah. They still hurt bad, still even hurt. though, like, I can say with certainty it wasn't the time for that, you know, what we, the choice that we made. Right. Yeah. My agent and I was the right choice. Oh, yeah. I really it, hope it there's still, a time. It still hurts. It still hurts. And, but, you know, I can look further and say, yeah. okay, this agent that I thought was perfect for me wasn't. Right. This book that almost that you know got to pub board and then got rejected. Mm -hmm. I'm glad actually. Oh, I'm so glad because that's my, yeah. not the right. direction that I that my writing took. Right. And I have a much clearer idea of what I was meant to write mm -hmm. than that. What was that? The second book I think that I yeah. wrote. Mm -hmm. You know, thank goodness it didn't get published because now it'd be out there and it would be just embarrassing not, for me. Yes. My second book. It would be, would embarrassing, be embarrassing for Mandy. If yeah. that book was out, she would have to like say now that she doesn't know book. me. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I meant mine. I'm sorry. I no, I wasn't. Don't. <laughs> I'm just sitting here looking from one to the other like, what is happening? I don't even know what book she's talking about. Heaven forbid I embarrass my friend Mandy. <laughs> Nobody wants to embarrass Mandy. Okay. Oh my gosh, I would have to change my name. Yeah. <laughs> So I could continue to be uh, friends with Mandy after yeah. having written such a stinker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, God. I was projecting I'm because sorry. my my first book never got anywhere. I think heaven. Oh, mine but, didn't either. Yeah, yeah thank but God. My, my second yeah. book, I was like, why isn't this getting published? Yes. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, thank, thank you, God. that wasn't published because yes. that would have been embarrassing. So I I have a question to go with this, and this is a this is something I haven't quite answered myself. Like I like. I, <laughs> Ooh, I mean, that's the best that makes, kind of question. <laughs> that makes it sound I like, do not have an answer to this question I'm about to ask. It makes me sound like I'm shocked that I can't answer my question. <laughs> the all-knowing <laughs> Christina <laughs> has a question for us. <laughs> She's not wise enough to answer it to her own well, she, astonishment. <laughs> <laughs> she is younger than Mandy and I. <laughs> <laughs> so good. We're having too much fun, folks. Okay, now I um, need to know the question. Yeah, no. So it's interesting because you were that you'd mentioned this, Evangeline, and that you had talked about it too, Mandy. Because I was thinking, and yes, I am younger, so you can save. Don't you know? It's fine. It's fine. But when I remember when I turned thirty, I had a friend who was like, I was just so frustrated. I was like, I don't want to be thirty. Thirty's like. 30, 30's 30, you know? Yeah, and, we and scoff at her. You, you scoff, yeah, right. We scoff at 30. Scoff at 30. <laughs> yes. and, um, and my friend, who was um, five years older, I think it's time, she, sa she said, um, oh, no, she said, your 30s are the best. She's like, because it's in your 30s that you, that you stop worrying so much about what other people think, and you actually start living life. Mm -hmm. And it was so interesting. I was like, oh, it's ridiculous. Like, I just don't want to be in my 30s. Like, there's just something about it. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm uh, 34 now. And I can say, and I actually haven't said this to her face. So, um, sorry, Christy. <clears throat> I'll tell you in a minute. I'll tell you, I'll tell you next week. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but she was right. She was so right. So, mm -hmm. four years later, I really, really enjoy my 30s. I am a different person I can see things 
um, the more nuanced perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a more of a like, okay, I see why that happened now. There's more mm -hmm. self confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't. Yeah. Doesn't mean I, I'm not good at self denigration uh, right. <laughs> or self deprecation rather. A denigration too, I guess. Yeah. But I said self degradation. I'm like, yeah. don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't well, do that, Christine. Because you were telling me, you were telling me in the green room about me being self deprecating. Oh, but I'm so Trust bad. me. Oh, I'm so honey, bad. You did not know me 20 years ago. This mm. is not. This was not a part of my skill set. <laughs> so you know, I mean, 40s and 50s, because I am almost 54, and um, just so you know, it gets better. It does. As far as caring less and less about what people think. And knowing yourself better. And knowing, knowing yourself. yourself. hundred. Yeah. I mean, yes. I, that's probably not a given, but I am grateful for mm -hmm. the people that I know and the journey yeah. I've walked. Right. Um, there, there's more of yeah. a confidence. There's more of an assurance. Well, and I can, but, I remember it used to really bother me, like going to the grocery store or whatever, and I, could no, I would notice that all the like teenagers and stuff didn't like looked right through me when I had like my little babies and stuff. And, oh, like, sure, sure. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. Was yeah. Like, oh, I know what they see. They see a dumpy housewife with a baby or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now sure. it it just cracks me up. Like, because yes, I'm totally invisible to them. Because I mean, I have gray hair now, so I, I mean, I am. It I is am, interesting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it just you know now I can and not with bitterness, but with like. Um, I don't know, sincere humor, like, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't exist. Gotcha. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. And, yeah. um, and I'm just so, I know who God made me to be. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. And, and I, like I just said a second ago, I don't know if that's a given with age, because mm -hmm. I do know people my age and older who are sad and lost and bitter. And so I'm, I'm grateful that, whatever people God has brought into my life. And, um, yeah. you know, Anselm, honestly, mm -hmm. has been a huge part of that because mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, look at all these weird people. <laughs> yeah. I'm at home. <laughs> and yeah. I'm sincerely, sincerely. Mm -hmm. um, so... Yeah, so as far as, I mean, to get back to the topic, I mean... Yeah, no, and I said I had a question. I never even got to my question. Oh, so sorry. We no, no, question. <laughs> I did, I know. Well, I feel bad because I, I told the listeners, I, I had a question, then I started talking about... Well, well, well then I interrupted you. <laughs> I'm like an old lady already. I'm like, so once upon a time... Yeah. <laughs> what's your question? You? What's when your, I was young. What's your question, child? <laughs> what's your question, darling? <laughs> yes, my question. Um, so we were talking about... Um, we were talking about, well, first of all, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> talking about, right, story, wrong time, <laughs> letting go of projects that um, have been shut down by forces outside of our control. And I'm you just had at a this friend. point giving the listeners an update because... Yeah. Christina has, I think has gone to the probably, I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> listeners will probably be able to tell that we recorded this late podcast a little bit late after yeah. recording another. Oh, well. And they're laughing along. Well, like, it's, it's a question anyway. we'll come back to because I can't remember it at the time. You can't sorry. remember the yes. question. I, that, I'm it's sorry. Bad. Well, Mandy was talking about kind of the gift of wisdom, of hindsight. Of yes. maturity. Sure. Of looking back. And <laughs> was I? Yes. <laughs> Just sum up. <laughs> Let's look back on what yes. I said a few moments ago. And, um, and yeah. I, like, I agree. I, you know, and like I said, I can look back and at some of those things that happened and say, wow, that was the wrong turn or the wrong, you know, and I'm so glad that it didn't. But then there's also the coming around, the, um, I don't know, the stepping finally back into Kronos or into Kairos, Kairos. you know, it's mm -hmm. like you're in Kairos time um, when you're creating. Yes. And then you step into Kronos and you're out of mm. sync, you know, into yes. the real that. world. Mm. Yes. And you're like, oh, something's wrong. It's like you're floating and then you're trying to come down to the ground and you have that like moment where you're trying to run at the same speed as the ground. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, it totally <laughs> does. It, it's you know, like almost flying, like the way time travel like, yes. is conveyed. That's what it feels like when you mm. come out of like the trance, the creative right. trance of Kairos time. Right. And mm -hmm. it just like 
everything is out of sync. Yes. But then Kairos is the fullness of God's time. Right. And mm-hmm. so I feel like there are some projects, one particular that I'm working on now, which is not the one that I had to abandon. It's another one that just didn't happen. Mm-hmm. And now it's coming, you know, I'm working on it now in my little, like, one hour of novel time that I have to myself in the morning. And um, I can see why I needed to wait until now. Oh, that's awesome. Because it's, there's just so many different things that are coming out. I'm a different person. I'm Mm. a better writer. Mm -hmm. And there are things um, post-pandemic that I feel are addressed and pertinent to this novel that I'm writing, to this character. And I'm like, wow, you know, mm-hmm. I've lived long enough to see something that I had to put away come back around. Yeah. And that's such, that's so encouraging. And I have no idea if this will get, actually I'm to the point now where I'm like, I mean, I'll give it a whirl, the right. whole like, you know, publishing, but if not, I'll just do it myself. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's where I am. If, if the book I have out on um, submission right now, if nobody picks it up, I'm just going to mm-hmm. self-publish it. I'm, I'm just, yeah. you know. You just get to the point where you're like, I'm a writer. I am this a writer. This is what I do. Right. And there's reasons that you, you know, want to try traditional. There's reasons that you do self-publishing or indie, right. indie publishing. Mm-hmm. It's all a process. The, the only re- thing that's kept me away from self-publishing is I don't want to have to do the marketing thing. But if, if nobody's going to pick up my book, then I might as well just self-publish it. And then I, I do whatever, whatever happens, happens. You and want. you know, um, <laughs> the woman who wrote, this is a big book, which I haven't read it. So I'm not endorsing it or anything, but it's a really big book. Uh, lessons in chemistry, I guess, um, took off. It's like a big, and she's 66, so I'm a spring chicken, man. But anyway, it's her first novel, and mm-hmm. I saw her interviewed, and she said the reason she loves being, one of the reasons she loves about being a writer, she said, no one can fire you. Mm. You are a writer until you stop writing. Ooh. I've heard and something I was like, like that before. Oh, yeah. that's I like awesome. That. I love yeah. that. Yeah. And I remember how long it took me as a young person to call myself a writer and thankful. I'm so thankful for other people who told me you're not, you, you can call yourself a writer even if you haven't been published because you are a writer, you're writing. Mm-hmm. And um, so I try to tell the people younger than me who <laughs> don't believe in themselves, you know, I'm the old lady. Um but I mean, so we were talking about... The teenagers don't ignore you then. Yeah, no. Right? I don't let them ignore me. You know, anyway. Coming but, to you um, for advice. <laughs> yeah. So you were talking about, um, you know, different projects that you come back to. Mm-hmm. And so I know I've talked to you about this outside of podcasty world. Um, <laughs> that podcast planet. Um <laughs> So the book that the book of mine that's out on submissions now is my third. Um, so my first one was terrible, but I love the characters. Mm-hmm. But I love them so much I didn't do anything to them. And um, pro tip: yeah. <laughs> you can't not do bad things to your characters. That's not a book. Oh, that's Nobody. what you mean by do anything to them. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You can't. You okay. can't like. Oh, I don't want you to suffer. That's not a good book. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not a book at all. Um, the second book was close. Um, I got the agent, but not the publisher. Um, but I got positive feedback. But it, um, And then in the meantime, I have this other idea that I want to do a retelling of Hosea. Um, and every time I sit down and try to do that, like, it just, there's like a cement block hmm. in my brain and I can't do it. Hmm. Um, and so I still have the pictures. I have a little, you know, in my writing office, I have pictures on a little ribbon and clothespins on the wall So I, um, to inspire me. And so I still have all my Hosea characters on the little ribbon, but they're very static and they won't come to life in my mind. So... I'm setting that aside. And in the meantime, um, just a few weeks ago, while I'm waiting to hear back for the submissions for this book, I 
suddenly realized there were some similarities with book one and two. Hmm. And I thought, wait a minute, that could actually be the same universe. Hmm. Those two books could exist in the same universe. And I realized a lot of overlap between some of the characters where character A from this book. So from the first book, there's a character named Bitsy and there's a character named Aster in the second book. They're the same character. Hmm. They're very similar. Aster's a little more acerbic um, than Bitsy was, but not much. And so that could be the same character. And so what I'm doing now is I'm, I've been combining those two and I and that's where my imagination is kind of running huh. right now is those first two practice books yeah um that I'm revisiting um to sort of see maybe it's time for them now but it's mm. nice to be far enough along in the journey to not be where yes Lewis everyone hears you mm -hmm. um to not be to be far enough along in the journey to not feel like it's do or die. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes. Yes, I can play. Yeah. When you realize that mm -hmm. not every idea is right for this specific moment, mm -hmm. it gives you freedom to play. Mm -hmm. It does. And explore. Which is such a good place to start with. From, yeah. With, with creativity. And it's, it's just proof that nothing is wasted. Yes. You know, exactly. even our daydreams and the just the little bits and pieces like mm -hmm. I have a like document that I you know the the phrase kill your darlings mm -hmm. yes yeah. I have a document with every book that I just call notes that when I have to kill my darling I just copy and paste it in there yeah. how big is this I, document now well I have different document like for each book I oh, oh got it, got See, it. Okay. I, yeah, I okay. have a document called um stuff I deleted I'm very oh, articulate. See, there you go there I'm you so go. articulate it's but, easy to find <laughs> Right. And it's just in paragraphs. But it's there. Yeah. And, you know. It's my compost a pile. A lot of the time. <laughs> yeah. I true. don't go back <laughs> to it. But it's comforting to know it's there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, like you said, it's your substrate. Mm -hmm. It's it's just like the all the stuff mulling about. And that's, that's healthy, I think. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know you had asked earlier on if we kind of had some... So, some, some some sort of examples creatively where where we had sort of a right story wrong time moment, um, and and I do I do and and I don't know that there's an element of this where where I'm trying to figure out the end the end right okay <laughs> so just to back up so that it makes sense um, I had this moment just without getting too deep into the the actual circumstances I just had a moment of uh, it's not it's not um, Oh, there's an actual like poetic slash literary term for it, and I can't think of what it is now. It's not epiphany; it's something even cooler than that. But whatever, fine. I had some kind of random epiphany, and <laughs> I thought, oh my goodness, I should I should do this project. This is a project I should, you know, embark upon. But mm -hmm. no, that's silly. Um, and then I'd asked a friend about it and the friend said, well, no, like seriously, like, why aren't you thinking about it? And I was like, well, because X, Y, Z, he's like, that's not good enough. And then he asked mm -hmm. me again. <laughs> and I remember I was talking about it, talking through it with my husband, Brian. And, and I remember as I was like voicing it to him mid sentence, I stopped and then I just started sobbing mm. and, and all of a sudden I just knew it was just. I knew I had to do it. I had to do the project. And I, it, it was, mm -hmm. it was one of the most powerful things I remember I've ever experienced, but it just felt really like the Holy Spirit was just saying, don't even think about it. This is what I want you to do. Now, the interesting thing for me is that that was ooh, four or five years ago now, four or five years ago, um, five, I think. Um, and, uh, I'm like, wow. Um, I remember tried, I d tried kind of diving in, mm -hmm. you know, initially. Um, I got a little bit of traction, but then I was just like, you know what? I'm stuck. I'm not qualified or mm -hmm. I'm just not there yet. I don't have the know-how or the <clears throat> wisdom or the qualifications to, to complete this project in the way that I think it needs to be done. Yeah. And so for me, it was a, it was a put on pause and 
And now I'm grateful personally that because of that really strong experience that I had where I just started bawling and knew that, you know, that this was beyond me and, you know, the Lord was kind of being like, yeah, Christina, I just want you to pay attention, you know? <laughs> um, so I haven't ever since that moment doubted that, that I do need to do it. But the question of timing and when to pick it up, what are, what are the signals or, or how will I know, or am I just procrastinating? You know, like, is, is there a moment where, where you do say, you, or you do have this sort of aha moment, now is the time to begin, I just know it. <laughs> or, you know, or, or is it like... And the heavens open. Exactly, you know. <laughs> the inspiration rained down yeah, upon exactly. her head. Exactly. Yeah, so like, so when is the time to say, ah, like, this is, like, I want this badly enough, or mm -hmm. I feel called deeply enough, or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. you would say, to begin working for it, or do you just say, I still have this feeling that I'm not ready and therefore right. I'm not going to try until I get a better sense of I feel like I might be able to pull this off for lack of a better phrase. So yeah, so I guess part of my, my question there to, to both of you is like where where is that place? And I don't know if you know if you have an answer, maybe none of us have an answer, maybe the Holy Spirit is the only one who has an answer. So <laughs> but I guess I am personally still struggling with, I still do definitely believe that project needs to happen mm -hmm. and um, that it will happen. I don't know what shape this project is going to take eventually, but I still do have confidence that, that the Lord has asked me to do it. And yes, I will do it, as least I am intending to. <laughs> but again, yeah. like, what if I die tomorrow? Where, where is that moment of, did I, did I... <laughs> not miss an opportunity, not disobey, but like, did I, right. did I take that moment and say, cool, I hear you. I believe you, God. Also, I'm not qualified. It's just not right for me right now. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll catch up with you later, you know, or, right. or where is that time where you really just say today or t t <laughs> now is the time to really, mm -hmm. to really start right. beginning. I think Lewis is telling mm -hmm. you. To start. I think that's really <laughs> valid and you know one of no, the things it's very valid. Yeah. yeah one of the things I want to talk about is kind of like dovetails with that which is like when you like sometimes it's obvious you know this project is done for now mm -hmm. yeah like Hosea when my my retelling of Hosea when I sit down I my brain literally like yeah. Not literally, but it's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. sorry. Right. It's okay. See, that's what it feels like. It feels yeah. like gears have locked. Mm -hmm. And so there's just no doing it. Yeah. So there would be people that say, um, we'll put, you have to push through it. You know, like every time yeah. you go to a writer's conference, you hear it's like mm -hmm. some speaker is going to say, well, a real writer is the one who shows up to the page every day. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I show up, I just don't always put something on the page, so deal. Right, deal exa it. exactly. <laughs> and, you know, like, 99% of the time, those are dudes. <laughs> Let's just not go down that, Sorry. you know. And I'm like, who cleans your house for you? <laughs> yeah. Who I that takes care true. of your kids and cooks your meals for you? <laughs> so that That's you can true. show up to the page every single day. Yeah, it's true. I think there is like a definite <laughs> overlooking of like life and yeah. reality. Yeah. But the point is like, is it abandonment or is it surrender? Or is it wisdom? Or yeah, which, you know, yeah. kind of goes along, I right. think, with surrender. Yeah. Although there's surrender and there's defeatism. Right. Which are two very yet, different things. Surrender is wisdom if you yes. do it right. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. that's that's gotcha. what I'm saying. Like mm -hmm. there's two different paths. There's two different like, you know, conventional wisdom and what I would argue is is true wisdom informed mm -hmm. by a kingdom mindset. Um, that, you know, surrendering to the flow. Of the spirit is the, the is kairos. some is yeah, the kairos yeah. <laughs> yeah it was it was very much one of those yeah, yeah. is mm -hmm. is a thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is a thing ladies I and gentlemen I think it's worth <laughs> like asking yourself why am I stopping am I stopping mm -hmm. because I don't like what I'm putting on the page and if that's true maybe just keep putting it on the page anyway and then come back to it and fix it later. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Because whoever said you can't edit a blank page, it's been 
attributed to billions. Like <laughs> Mandy Hop said it. That's who said it. Yeah. Anyway, there we go. You tell uh, those teenagers. So I don't Mandy. know who actually said you can't edit a blank page, but it's true. You mm-hmm. can't. Um. So, so there is that aspect of like, don't let self doubt stop you. And mm-hmm. it's very, it's really hard to differentiate like what mm-hmm. what it is that's stopping you when you're when you're struggling. Um, yeah. But the um, better you can know yourself and know your calling, mm-hmm. um, the clearer that becomes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I know, like with with the Hosea project, this is not a matter of I'm doubting what I can put on the page. I just literally, it's just. It's, it's, it really does. I keep saying literally and I don't mean it <clears throat> anyway. Um, it is like locked gears in my brain. Mm-hmm. That's not self doubt. That's the ideas aren't coming. Um, and an author that I love, Ann Tyler, she's, she's just a fun, like quirky book, like, um, quirky characters. I love her books. Um, she has a, she gives herself so much freedom with her ideas. She has a little three by five card box and she writes what if questions on them. Awesome. And she'll write them down when they come to her and then just put them in the box Mm -hmm. because she has learned that not all of the questions she asks will bloom as she puts it Mm. in her brain. Mm -hmm. And so then when she sits down to write another book, she flips through her what if cards and sometimes, and, and she just waits. And if mm-hmm. something blooms, then she mm-hmm. pulls the card out and that's the book she writes. Mm-hmm. And some of those cards will sit in that box for literally years mm-hmm. before mm-hmm. she writes them into a book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so we have to remind our, our, our brains are plastic and beautiful. Mm-hmm. And um, God may give us an idea that it's not ready yet. Yes. But he still gave it to us. Yeah. yeah. And so it doesn't mean it was wasted. I think mm-hmm. in our... Or that we were wrong. And or that we were that wrong. Was, exactly. Yeah. And so I think part of this is just being human. Part of it is being in the Western culture that is all about progress, progress, progress. So much. And yeah. measurement and, mm-hmm. um, you know, grades and mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have to let go of that and and... Be grateful for the app, for the idea and the spark, and then be flexible with ourselves mm-hmm. as far as when it's time. Mm-hmm. Like my peonies, peonies don't bloom for three years yeah. after you plant them. Mm-hmm. That's not wrong. That's <laughs> just what they do. And I was very glad that this past spring was the third year after I planted my peonies. And so I finally had the blooms. Um now, for our for I, I for our creative ideas, we don't have like a gardening almanac that's going to tell us yep. <laughs> this Hosea idea will come to fruition in three seasons. Yeah. So we don't have that. But I mean, that's just the nature of the world God made. It's not mm-hmm. chron. It's not chronos, even though it looks it's like it is. It's not chronological. It's just not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not neat yeah. and you know metered out like a metronome mm-hmm. you know which is the beauty of it yes right and the the like hurry up and the go get um mm-hmm. that is our culture and our you know almost our dna in in mm-hmm. the u.s is like just such the, the enemy of creativity in so many ways oh yeah like yeah um, how was your day well i got this done i got that done i know why is that an answer to how was your day yeah that's it's, not that shouldn't be an answer right how was your day oh i know but it's so easy to do. i know <laughs> i'm not saying i don't do it <laughs> i know right it's 100 percent what i do so what do you think are some some um signs that it is time like to take up a project again i like i like i told you i um you know kind of came back to this project that i had written before and because of some like external things like just you know like i said post pandemic different different time i was like okay, Mm -hmm. there are some reasons that I should take this up again. And then there were just some internal Mm -hmm. um, 
cues just in my own brain and in my own spirit where I was like, I'm suddenly interested in this story again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I just followed that. Do you guys feel like there's like, that's a good balance and maybe a good answer to your conundrum? You know, if there are not sparks and clues that now is the time, I mean, wouldn't, yeah. don't you think that we can trust God to give us those clues? Like he, he gave you the idea. Don't you think that he will give you not only the grace and ability to write it, but even the prompt and the, the cue to start when I, it's time? I do. And I think that's, you know, partly where I was going back on that once upon a time moment where I completely forgot what I was going to say. And I started by talking about when I turned 30. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think what, uh, going back to that moment, I still don't know what I was going to say. But <laughs> the, the bonus of, of now being in my mid-30s and, and being able to say I actually do have faith, I, I have seen enough and, and the Lord has been with me through enough of my life and the ups and downs that I know that he is faithful and I know that if he calls, he will fulfill. Like, you know, um, what is that verse? Um, so he who he oh, has called, called you. is faithful. To yeah. Oh, yes. yes. And to yes. Work. Yes. I was gonna actually. Say, I was gonna mention that later, but you go what ahead. Is, well, I see. I can't recall the verse. So why don't you give the okay. verse? Because it's well, it goes in. It goes along with just something that was an Anselm experience nice. that um, kind of helped me in this journey coming to terms with. Um, letting go, surrendering projects, and mm -hmm. and then you know knowing that um, that time and my efforts are redeemed by yes. God. Um, it happened at a a conference, one of the artist retreat conferences, oh, yeah. and I was um, talking with Lancia, Lancia Smith, having a conversation with her, and you know how Lancia is; she's prophetic. Yes. Um, <laughs> she looked me in the eyes. We were talking about, I was just talking about, you know, difficulties, taking care of my kids, you know, just things like that and how it'd been a struggle to write. And she looked at me and she said, he who has began a good work in you will be faithful to complete yeah. it. Mm. And yep. she said, and that is not bound by your lifetime. I love that. <laughs> oh, yes. I love yes. that. Yep. Yes. Yep. So it's in Thessalonians. Mind blown, yes. like yeah. mm -hmm. perspective, just <laughs> yeah. 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 I, just, I think that's yeah. yeah, that's brilliant. That's amazing. I think that's absolutely correct, and I think that's again possibly thankful thanks to my uh, <laughs> mid thirties, um, <laughs> able to see time as a you know more yeah. timey wimey sort yes. of you know? wibbly, <laughs> wibbly wibbly yes. wobbly thing timey wimey. Thank you, Doctor Who. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and less of a less of a you have to get this done, and if you're not doing it now, you're not productive, Correct. and you mm -hmm. are failing at life. Like, right, that's mm -hmm. just not how it works. So it's I think not, yeah. We it's reject again, that. We reject that. <laughs> I mean, are we going <laughs> to say that Harper Lee is a failure because she quote unquote only published Kill a Mockingbird? No. No. <laughs> Nobody's going to say that. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. No one's going to say that ever. <laughs> no. Yeah. But I think it's it's this, for me anyway, what I've landed on is in terms of like even in this particular project is I'm just trying to be attentive. You're just trying yes. to pay attention. Mm -hmm. Is there something that keeps pulling this project back into my mind is there mm -hmm. a moment is there a feeling is there something that keeps like just I don't know coming into my daily vision so to speak mm -hmm. even if it's just prick you know even if it's just to, like something that's just feels off like am I paying attention well and I and think that's where it does make I mean um the whole our you know what you were saying Evangeline about all the writers who writers conferences who say you're not a writer if you're not showing up every day whatever yeah um i think okay define showing up because yeah. <laughs> if you are Good being point. attentive like you said mm -hmm. christina and maybe it's not every day maybe it's whatever fits in your mm -hmm. beautiful chaotic life mm -hmm. whatever that is um whatever actually makes sense if there is a regularity that is um, indicative of an, of an obedience to the calling and the purpose. The Ephesians 2.10, we are God's masterpiece. Mm -hmm. And we were created to do the good works that he prepared for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no timeline on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but there is a faithfulness. Mm 
mm-hmm. and an attentiveness, attentiveness. to that. Mm-hmm. And um, so if we are made for it, you mm-hmm. were made for it. And so whether that's once a week, once a month or every day, whatever works for you and your life that, that God has put placed you in, um, if you're paying attention um, and you're showing up and asking him what he has for you, mm-hmm. he will tell you he is faithful, he is faithful. to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the opposite of that would be like going about your life and waiting for him to like strike you with a thunderbolt and make you sit down. <laughs> I don't feel like that's right. That's probably not necessarily right. You're probably going to stymie yourself if you do it that way and wait for right. him to like yank you by the collar or push through on your own strength. Or exactly yes. both of those, yes. which would right. be the traditional interpretation. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Not that I, you know, ascribe this to every speaker at every writer's conference who right. has given that advice. <laughs> right. But the traditional interpretation that you sitting there in the audience think is I must be there every day right. and yeah. push through on my own strength. Right. And right. that's not the, that's not the answer. So right. Thunderbolts, yeah. probably right. not. Slogging through on your own power, word, probably word, not going to do it either. <laughs> word count goes do not work for me. Yeah. Let's, they yeah. don't work for me. No. Let's, let's just to me, dispense with that. <laughs> I tried that and I wrote, and they do work for some people. I'm, yeah. not, I'm just saying find what works for actual you. <laughs> and for me, word count goals don't work because I will create just, you know, nonsense nonsense <laughs> that really can't even be edited I mean into anything worthy so what my what I my goal for myself is time and as I'm sitting here I'm going when was the last time you sat down okay fine no I haven't but <laughs> so I need to get back to that we're not here to guilt trip there's no. grace there is grace um, but for me it's time and if I just tell myself I'm going to sit here for an hour. Then that is more natural. And then sometimes Mm -hmm. I still create nonsense, but it's, it's a lot more authentic to the way my creative process works. Mm -hmm. And then I'm being, there is a faithfulness and an obedience in that hour. Mm -hmm. Even if nothing, even if I don't write 2000 words. Yeah. I think it's the even if, and it's the faithfulness, and like yes. we've all kind of landed on the attentiveness. That is that is our job, mm-hmm. and that is what we can do while we're waiting, mm-hmm. you know. And that can be being attentive to, um, you know, a story that we're reading to our kids. Mm-hmm. That can be being attentive to the changing of the seasons, um, being attentive to. What is going on in our own emotions? Being attentive to how our like scope and what we want to spend our time on is changing. Mm-hmm. And it's like that's our job. That's what we can do. Mm-hmm. And I think as long as we're doing that, it makes it um, maybe not easier, but more it's more of an active surrender. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Eugene Peterson calls the life of faith a long obedience in the same direction. Yeah, Mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah. If we follow in his footsteps, then uh, we can't go too far off, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I love it. All right. Well, thank you, ladies, for helping me hash out my my struggles with timing. (laughs) Our pleasure. Things are winding down at the Anselm Society Digital Pub. The fire is down to embers, the customers are trundling home, and you've polished off your final glass. Once again, Believe to See is a podcast of the Anselm Society Arts Guild. If you have a few minutes to spare right now, please rate and review the show on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Mm